What is up guys, this is Max Square, and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a mixed background effect with multiple photos and textures. So I pulled together some examples to show you um, from some projects that I've worked on recently. So you, as you can see in this first example, she's got some of like that dust effect and like a flipped image with a gradient. Over here we've got that same speckled dust and some of that bokeh blurred out shot. In this example, this is from the uh, new Max Square artwork, which you'll see in the logo on the site. This is just a bunch of photos and textures combined to make this really colorful and textured image. So those are just a couple examples of what we're going to be making in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to be pulling various photos and textures from a few sites, which I'll have linked down below. So be sure to check those out. So the first is Unsplash, where we'll get our photos from. And then the second is Graphic Burger, which we will take our textures from. So when I'm looking for photos, I tend to just get one really brightly colored photo and then two or three more black and white and simple photos. So for the first one, I'm just going to type in something like color, see what comes up. And I think I'll use uh, this cloud effect here with the pink clouds. And then I'll type in mountain. And this is up to you what kind of object you want to use. I'm just using um, a mountain in this example. And I think something like this will work great. And then lastly, we want to get something, uh, something like with bokeh or some sort of blurred out shot. Uh, this will work great. And again, you can choose any photos you want and you can just cater to the project that you're working on. Next, we're going to head over to Graphic Burger and check out their backgrounds page. As you can see, they have a ton of awesome textures and effects here, uh, like the watercolor and wood stuff. But really what we're looking for is something a little more subtle and minimalist um, and more like a weathered look. So I'm going to take these uh, stone wall textures and download that below. And then we're going to head over into Photoshop. Now I would definitely recommend having a folder where you keep all of the photos and uh, other resources that you're using for the project. That way you can just drag it all in at once and keep it all together. So I'm just going to select our photos, drag them in here, and you're going to want to scale up the photos so that they fit to your canvas. I'm just working on a 2560 by 1440 frame right now. So once you've done that, we can go ahead and choose a texture. So I'm just going to look at these real quick. And I think I'll probably use the second one here. Just drag that in again, scale it up. And then once you have all of your layers in, you're going to want to focus on the main part of your image. And in this case, it's going to be our mountain backdrop. Now we're just going to be using that for more of the structure and then the other photos to kind of colorize and add some texture to it. Now I'm just going to add a black and white adjustment layer and anything you have beneath this will automatically turn to black and white. So I'm going to leave it at the top here so we can switch on our clouds layer. Now, of course, we're taking out the pinks from here, but you can see that in that photo, those colors are very dense and bright. So we're going to be using that to power our colors that we use later on. Now, you can experiment with different blend modes here, but I tend to use either a multiply or overlay effect. But I'm going to use a multiply just for this example. Next, we're going to add in our bokeh. Now, this is something that is going to be the most subtle out of all of the layers, most likely, because this is just something to fill in and add a little bit of spice, if you will, around the edges, because um, it's more abstract and not something you want to focus on too much. So what I'm going to do is actually just bring back the fill here, and I'm going to keep it at about 10 or 8% here. And in fact, I'm going to add a Gaussian blur of about 4 or 5% just to give it a little bit more of an out of focus look. And lastly, we can add in our texture. Now for this, I'm going to be using the multiply effect. This is definitely going to darken your image, especially if you have all black and white um, and more black layers beneath it. So one thing I like to do to fix this is to add a new white solid. And then I just add the blend mode and set it to overlay. And this will definitely brighten up your image, but you can just kind of pull back the opacity as needed. And I think I'm actually going to pull back the opacity of the texture to about 35, 32 or so, just to kind of give it a more subtle look. Now, if you decide not to use the colors from one of the photos that you chose, and you'd like to use a gradient or um, just kind of one color to apply to everything, I would recommend choosing a new layer and adding a fill to that. 
and then you can go into blending options and either add just a solid color or a gradient fill. I'm gonna choose a gradient overlay here and I'm gonna use this uh, green and blue from I guess the last project I used it on. And I'm just using linear at about a 45 degree angle. And then I'm just gonna pull back the opacity here. And I'm probably gonna keep it at about 55%. And this is where you can start to reorder layers to kind of pull out certain features of the backdrop. So if you want to pull the bokeh onto the top of the gradient layer to pull those out, and maybe if you want that still to be black and white, you can take those two and convert that to a smart object so that the bokeh is still sticking out, but it's not using any of the colors from that photo. And again, you can mess around with different blend modes and opacities of the other images just to kind of bring out certain features. And this is really something that you just experiment with. There's no right or wrong per se. It's not like a five-step list to getting this perfect background. It's really just playing around with it until you get what you want. Now, of course, if you want to add any text or logos at this point, that's completely up to you. I'm gonna pull in just the Max Square logo here scale it down a little bit and make sure it's centered. This is of course up to you how much you want to bring out that top object, but some things I like to do are just to group everything in the background together and you can convert to a smart object and blur it out if you want. You can bring back the opacity just a hair to focus on that logo. Now one thing I like doing is actually inversing the text and the background so that the background fills in the text or logo that I'm working with. And one way to do that is just to scale up the text that you're using and then dragging in a new white solid. I'm just going to use this background layer here and put it on top of that background, group it with your text, and then go to your texture logos blending options, go to knockout shallow and fill opacity to zero. Now you can actually invert that. And then if you want to move around the background to show different parts, you can accomplish that look as well. So guys, that is it for this tutorial. I will be including a download link for the project file and the photos and resources that I used down in the description. So be sure to check that out. I hope that helped you in some way or another. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.